Hello and welcome to the Proverbs 31 Ministries Morning Show. My name is Nicole Moses and I am sitting with my friend <laughs> and co-host Maddie Vincent. Maddie, how are you? I'm so good, Nicole, and I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm excited to be here with you. If you saw me just giggling, it was because I was trying to get your comments <laughs> on my computer that's in front of me, but also not have to see Nicole when I space because it can be really distracting <laughs> yeah. but your comments are here I see you Susan joining in Shannon welcome 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 we're so glad that you're here okay Nicole I have a very fun question oh to ask what's you. up what is something good happening in your life right now oh something so good that's happening my brother graduates from medical school in two weeks and that means my sister who is lives a few states away. She's flying into town. And so I'm just so excited for my family to be together for a few days. It's the best thing right That's now. That's incredible. Yes, it's so good. Nicole what about you? comes from a family of doctors. Oh, this I is do. your second sibling. This sibling. is my second sibling who's a doctor. Yes, my other one is in the medical field. So, but I'm here at Proverbs <laughs> and social media and I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> it's amazing. Maddie, what's something good in your life right now? Okay, I have some really fun news. One of my very best friends got engaged oh, this weekend. Yes. So I am just so excited for her. It's been so fun mm. to just squeal and giggle yes. and just get really excited. Um, but I want to know what is something good happening in your life? Leave a comment. I have them pulled up. I really am excited to see stuff that's good going on. Yes, that's so fun. We're looking at your comments. I think it's so fun hearing the good things that are happening in people's lives. I think it's so important, especially if you're walking through something really hard or even just something that's less than ideal, if you had a bad day, to really bring those good things to light and remember that even in the really hard, God is doing really good things. Mm. Um, okay, so I'm looking at the comments. They're coming in very slowly. If you have something good to share. Beth is going to be retired. Her husband. Her husband will be retired tomorrow afternoon. That's, Wait, so, that's exciting. so exciting. Uh, have fun. Ah, well, congratulations, Beth. We love hearing something good. Okay, you guys. Today we are talking about tough conversations yes and I feel like there has to be that like <laughs> boom boom boom, boom, boom. boom. But, like after because tough conversations at least for me I'll speak for myself not for you Nicole okay. they can really weigh on me if mm -hmm. I feel friend offended by a friend or there's some sort of spiff with my sister mm -hmm. I will constantly think about it and I yes. don't know how to bring it up mm -hmm. I don't know the best way to go about it mm -hmm. so instead I just want to avoid it oh I'm the avoider mm -hmm. I just wait and wait until it's way past the point that you should be having this tough conversation yeah you think about it in the shower yes. you think about it while you're Before laying you're in bed, bed. Um, so I'm really excited. We have a great guest on the show today. Her name is Jessica Clazo, and she's going to walk us through how we can have tough conversations. Yes. Jess, do you want to join us? Jess, welcome, welcome to the Proverbs 31 Ministries Morning Show. We're so excited that you're here. Will you just tell us a little bit about you and what you do here at P31? I am so excited to be here with you girls this morning. And so thank you for having me. I... So I am a wife, a mom, a daughter, a sister. I have two boys. And so they are, I love them, right? Um, but I, for my job here at P31, have a very special role. I'm the senior manager of operations. And what that means is I get the privilege of working with all of our teams. And the way that I work with all the teams is because I oversee our customer experience department. And so I'm continually making sure that all the things that we're doing just, you know, they sit well with our audience and that they're, you know, really what, what our intentions are, we're able to deliver them. Right. And so sometimes I get really hard questions, right. And they're really tough topics that I have to help um, the different teams respond to. And so that is why I'm here today, because we are talking about some tough conversations and I've had several tough conversations that I've had to be a part of. 
Um, Jess, you have helped me not just professionally have hard conversations in the workplace, but you've also helped me navigate tough conversations personally. And so I just thought before we kind of get into this conversation, can you define what kind of tough conversations we are talking about today? Yes. So we are talking about relational conversations, right, with your family, with friends, with coworkers, but we're talking about the day-to-day stuff, right? The, you know, my girlfriend was going to go with me somewhere and then she flicked out on me last minute and went out with my other friend, right? And so, or, you know, in, my husband said something to me the wrong way, right? And I have to, you know, say like, oh, this has happened a few times, right? But we are not talking about toxic relationships right now. We are not talking about unhealthy relationships. We are talking about the normal day-to-day things that sometimes rub us the wrong way, that we by nature have a hard time approaching those type of conversations. So really we're just talking about conflict, right? We're talking Mm -hmm. about conflict is what we're talking about. Yeah, I think that's so good. So Jess, when we start approaching like a tough conversation, what are some things that we can do to prepare, prepare our hearts in like as we consider having this conversation? We start with our posture, right? And we have to remember that the greatest commandment that the Lord gave us, the second greatest, right? Is to, we have to love our neighbor, right? And we are also told in scripture that we are to have conversations full of grace and seasoned with salt. And so right there, that tells us that our posture needs to be in the right place before we even think about having any kind of a conversation. Mm, That's so good, Jess. I love that that happens before you even think about having a tough conversation. Um, Well, what's another thing, what's step two to prepare our hearts for this? So we prepare our hearts by going to prayer. And prayer is so key because if our hearts are not prepared properly for the conversation and our minds are not prepared properly for the conversation, then it will just be that much harder to have the conversation. And so my favorite scripture that I go to is Philippians four, six, and seven. And it's, it's a well-known scripture that most people quote for the first part of it. You know, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, you know, take it to the Lord in prayer but it's really that second part of the verse that really helps us to prepare our hearts for conflict because by taking everything in prayer to the Lord, then the peace, which surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and guard our minds in Christ Jesus. And I never before had put that together, how prayer can be a guard for my heart and for my mind. And when our hearts are hurting, because if they weren't hurting, then it wouldn't be a hard conversation to have, right? We need, we need them guarded a little bit. And so that's why prayer is so key. Jess, I think that's such a good thing. I love when you take verses that we're used to hearing and you kind of give a fuller context Mm -hmm. of what they're saying and how we do it and apply it. Um, Jess, so we've talked about, you have to prepare your heart by praying. Um, You prepare your heart by just checking yourself and knowing like, what is my posture into this? But what's another good step as we consider for having conversations? Yeah. Once, once we've been in prayer, we have to be prepared to listen. Right. And we are prepared to listen first and foremost to the Holy spirit, because we need to know where is our heart in the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. If our heart is still what I call very raw, you know, very just, sensitive and just that wound is still really, really open, then in prayer, we will know the Holy Spirit will tell us that we probably need to seek godly counsel before we take any other steps. Because if you try to approach the conversation when your heart is still open like that, then then the conversation's not going to go well at all because you you'll still be defensive. You'll still be you're it, It's really hard to have that posture of knowing that I have to love my neighbor when that wound is really, really open. And I'm just, I'm really not liking my neighbor right now, you know? Yeah. I think that's so good. I think it's important to go to godly counsel, like you said, and someone who 
has a relationship with Christ and that is at the forefront of their lives. So um, they can bring you back to what's really important. Um, so Jess, what would you say is like the ultimate goal, like what we want to get out of like these tough conversations? Well, I think the ultimate goal to remember is that our responsibility at all times is that we are to be Christ-like and represent Christ. And so this conversation has to represent Christ in there. Christ didn't avoid the hard conversations. Christ called the things out, but again, full of grace, seasoned with salt, you know, the, the posture, loving the neighbor with the right intention. So we have to remember that first and foremost. And what that does is that removes me from the equation a whole lot. And the yeah. more I remove myself from the equation and I put God into that, the more my heart is softened and the, the easier, and I'm never easy, right? But it just becomes a little bit easier to then approach the conversation. Mm, yeah, that's so good. I mean, these are great steps. Yeah. And we haven't even gotten into the talking part <laughs> I know, of the conversation. <laughs> I think that it's so amazing to just talk about all these things that we have to consider beforehand. Um, Jess, I have one last question for you about kind of the pre-work to having a tough conversation, which is how can we ask ourselves questions to make sure that we are prepared to listen, that make sure that our heart is postured in the right set, like space? How do we um, make sure that our ultimate goal is to reflect Christ in this conversation? Do you have any questions that we could ask ourselves personally that would help us know where we're at? Yeah, there's a lot of self-reflection going on here. If you haven't noticed the theme, you know, so far. And so you start with, is the conversation even necessary? Yeah. Why do I say that? Well, we have to really evaluate what was happening when the incident occurred, right? Was I having a bad day? Did I have other bad news that was given to me that then this happened? And so just really, I wasn't in a place that I just was taking everything the wrong way. Was that person in a bad space? Do I know of anything going on in, in their space that might have caused the issue to happen? Or is this a continual issue? Is this something that's happened several times? And yes, the conversation, it's time to have the conversation because if we don't have the conversation, then like, what's the outcome of this, right? Will we have a wedge in the relationship that now we, we really can't get past? Will it create bigger problems with, with other people if we don't have this conversation? Like, are there ramifications for the people around us? Because we, we know that everything that happens, like there, there's consequences, right? And so what's a consequence of having the conversation and what's a consequence of not having the conversation? And it's just really thinking about that. That's so good. Those are so thought provoking and just so good to, yeah, like you said, do that self-reflection work before. Um, but Jess, I'd love to know why, why is it so important to think about questions like these before entering into a tough conversation? Because we need to really, really know where we are. And if we don't know where we are, and if we haven't done the work on our end, then there's no way that we can expect the conversation to go well at all, because mm -hmm. we haven't thought about our hearts. We haven't thought about what does Christ want me to do in this? We haven't, if, if we haven't taken the time to do any of that, it, then it's really easy to go into these conversations, very defensive and with the hurt, just kind of spewing everywhere and, and speaking out of that place of hurt, instead of speaking out of a place of love, which is where we're supposed to be speaking out of. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. I think that we've really talked through everything we have to mm -hmm. pre-consider yeah. before you go into this conversation, but let's get into some practical tips, Jess, of what are some do's and don'ts of tough conversation? Let's start with the don'ts. Okay. Do not have this conversation via text or email. What? <laughs> Number one. <laughs> I can't text my sister and tell her I'm mad at her. No, because what that will do is you're going to set off the other person and then you're going to get a bunch of text messages back and forth or emails back and forth that are just full of raw emotion. And it doesn't matter how many emojis you try to fit in there. 
they are going to read that message however they read that message, not how you intended that message to be sent. So absolutely no hard conversations via text or email. Okay, we got it. Um, the other things is you don't want to be distracted. So don't, when, when you go to have the conversation, don't have your phone out, don't respond to other text messages, take any calls, make sure that you can give your undivided attention to the conversation. You don't want to blame shift, right? If you start playing the blame game, defenses are going to go up and then it's, it's really going to be, you're going to end up in a little bit of a word brawl, right? Where you're back and forth arguing and say, but you did this, but you did this. And that's not healthy. That's not productive. And that's not Christ-like, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't want to interrupt. That goes back to the listening. You know, it's why you, you start by preparing to listen first to the Holy Spirit, but then to the person. And you don't want to interrupt them. You need to listen to all of what they're saying so that you can gain understanding of where they were and, and maybe the why something happened. And then, then you, you're able to, to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. Those are so good. Okay. So just to recap, don't have a conversation over text or email. Mm -hmm. Don't be distracted. Do not blame shift and do not interrupt. Those are so good. And friend, if you're watching this and you're like writing these down, trying to make sure you have all these down, let me tell you, we have put all of these and more into a free, completely free downloadable resource, a guide to have tough conversations. So we will stick the link for that in the comments. Um, so don't worry if you don't catch one, we've got you. Okay, Jess. Now that we've covered the don'ts, what are some things that we should do during a tough conversation? So first ask the person, when is a good time to talk? Don't spring the conversation on them because if they're not ready for it, that's not going to be any helpful either, right? They, they may not realize that they did something that hurt you or that offended you. It could be, they're, they're perfectly fine going along with their days. And then all of a sudden you're like, hey, you did this to me, right? It's like, what, wait, wait, what are you talking about? And so you want to give them a chance to be able to prepare for the conversation as well. But you also want to ask for that time within a short time frame, right? You don't want something to linger. So, you, you know, you want to ask, hey, in the next, you know, day or two, do you have time where we can just kind of sit and chat for a little bit? And so I think you start there. Then you want to pick a neutral place, right? If you can have the conversation in person, like face-to-face, -face, that is the most ideal scenario, right? But you may not. What if your sister lives across the country, right? Or, or you're just not available. Your week is crazy busy, but it's something that needs to get addressed. FaceTime, Zoom. I mean, we have all the technology right now where we can actually be face-to-face -face with each other, even though you're not in the same room. But that's important because... You need to see body language. They need to see your body language. It's just that that part's really, really important. And going back to if you're in a neutral place, you're not in your house. You're not in their house. You know, you want to pick somewhere private. You don't want to pick a place where there's, you know, other people can hear something or something could be embarrassing, right? You want to make sure that the other person doesn't feel cornered, right? Or like, like they're going to be attacked, you know? So you pick neutral places, right? If you're on the phone, FaceTiming like this, pick a room, go in your room by yourself, make sure they're by themselves so you can have the conversation. If you're in a coffee shop, pick a corner where nobody's going to really be able to hear everything that's going on or go for a walk, right? And just, and talk through it. So I think that's really, really important. Do your best to stick to the facts and, and remember something. Yes, the facts of it made you feel a certain time, type of way, but you want to stick to the facts because if you stick to the facts, then it's a lot easier to work through the problem than if you're, you're really just focusing on all of the emotion of, of how you're feeling in the situation. And you want to be affirming to the other person. Mm -hmm. and, and that may be hard because you're hurting, right? But you want to affirm the other person to say, I hear you. I hear you. I understand where you're coming from. This is how this came across the wrong way. This is how this, this is why this made me feel this way. So I understand your intention. This is, but this is how it made me feel. So what do we need to do to kind of move, you know, to pass this? And so if you can do those things, then it helps guide the conversation in a positive way versus 
like I said, you know, those defenses going up and then all of a sudden the conversation goes sideways and now you have an even bigger issue than what you started with. Yeah, this is such good advice, Jess, just um, like asking that person when it's a good time to meet so that they can prepare for it. Um, picking a neutral place that's not in favor of one or the other. I think that's huge. Um, sticking to the facts, that is going to help guide your conversation so much. Mm -hmm. And being affirming when possible, yeah. that is such good advice. Just like Nicole said, we have linked the guide to tough conversations in the comments mm -hmm. so that you can have kind of these at your fingertips and refer back to them when you need to. Um, Jess, I just think this is so helpful. I think that so many times we avoid these conversations or go into them full of emotion without thinking through much. And just these are some great tools to help us manage these tough conversations. So thank you. Yeah, I think everyone needs to just remember that hard conversations are hard. And yeah. so we're never prepared, really. Like it's it takes so much preparation for it because we're not built to have like these hard conversations and they're not comfortable for anybody. It doesn't matter what your personality is, even if you're more of a confrontational person than a not confrontational person, it's still a hard conversation to have. And that's why being rooted in prayer, being rooted in God's word and, and making sure that he is at the center of everything versus me and my emotions being at the center of everything is the key to be able to manage that hard conversation. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Jess, thank you so much for all this information. I feel like I am, I feel so prepared to walk <laughs> into a tough conversation if that comes my way, which it probably will because it <laughs> happens to all of us all the time. So I would love if you would pray for all of us as we go about our day and our weekend and um, just if we run into a tough conversation. Absolutely. Father in heaven, we come before you, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you that you are so mindful of us, that you know the things that burden us. You know how important relationships are to us, Lord, and you give us the tools that we need to be able to be successful with those relationships. Father, I thank you that you know the hearts of all the women that are watching and that are here and, and you know the situations that they're all in, Lord. And we pray that, that these words would help them today, Lord, that they would remember to look to you to be able to help them in the relationships that they are having a difficult time with, that you would give them the words that are graceful, Lord, to be able to speak um, just what it is that they're feeling and their emotions, Father. We pray, Father, that our hearts would be tender to you, Lord, that our eyes would be your eyes, Lord, that we would see the other person the way that you see us with love, Lord, that our hearts would be just empathetic towards them, Lord, and just have love for them, Lord, and that we would speak, Father, just with all the grace and the mercy, the way that you speak to us, Lord. We thank you that, again, that you are mindful of us and that you take care of us, Lord, and we pray, Father, that if these ladies are going to have to have a conversation in this near future, that they would be reminded that you're walking with them at every part of it, every step of the way. And we thank you for always being with us. We pray, Father, for this day and for everything else that we have before us. Lord, continue to walk with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, friends, if that prayer doesn't set you up to have a hard <laughs> conversation, I don't know what will. Um, thank you for joining us on today's morning show. We will, <laughs> we will be back on May 12th, and we're going to be talking about five places to park your mind when God says no. We can't wait to see you then. We will talk soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.